What's up? What's going on, guys? This is Mr. Gold, and as you can already tell, I have a little bit different of a different setting so far today. I'm going to be starting a new series sort of thing. It's going to be um, me just doing sort of an NFL commentary while playing a sort of a different game. This is going to be Speedrun 4 on Roblox, and I'll be doing a commentary and a breakdown of some NFL rosters. I think I'm doing the AFC East today, but so yeah, let's Yo just guys, get into the just video. Yo guys, sub to my channel, iDog, and do that right now. You're not allowed to sub to iDog until you've subbed to my channel, but let's get on to the video. That in that in that in that in that, in, that intro, but yeah. Anyways, let's just pretty much get into it. If I stop running for a bit, it's because my phone's gone to sleep and I can't talk about rosters without having the roster in front of me. But uh, pretty much, first. Oh, I did. I dog reminded me of this. I did want to go ahead and give you guys a shout out. Thank you guys so much for 120 subscribers. That's amazing. 120. We're doing, we're getting up there. Hopefully 150 will be next. And I totally forgot the cactus to come at you. But anyways, let's just get right into it. So first team, I'm going to be breaking down their roster probably for a bit. These will probably be 15 to 20 minute long videos of just me breaking down rosters. But uh, Buffalo Bills, obviously, gosh. And who they have at quarterback is Josh Allen. And he's their main guy. I think that he's actually pretty solid at this point. I think they made the right choice drafting him. I don't think they, there was really a better option available in that draft, obviously, unless you're going to go get Lamar, but not really anyone was really looking for Lamar that early in the draft. But um, I think Allen and Lamar are definitely the two, best two to come out of that draft. I definitely think that it was definitely a good pick to get him there, but I think he still needs an improvement. Right now, he's a mid-tier quarterback, definitely in the in the ballpark with guys like Matt Ryan, um, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, stuff like that. He's in that ballpark, Ben Roethlisberger, that sort of area right there. But honestly, like he still needs a little improvement. He has a pretty solid team around him, and I'll be talking about that later. But he definitely could still improve and they also drafted a quarterback which I'll also be talking about later to put a little pressure on him I guess or just to be a career backup I don't know but yeah he's pretty solid I definitely would rank him around mid tier still could use some work but he hasn't I don't think he's been to the Pro Bowl yet but he's definitely right on the edge and if he keeps improving the way he is he'll definitely be there very soon and then we have his backup quarterback which is Matt Barkley and he it's definitely a very good quarterback. Like Barkley, he's basically been a career backup as well. I believe he was over Philadelphia, over in Arizona. He's been a career backup, never really been a starter, but he does his job well enough, and he should be able to retain that easy enough. And keep in mind, out of the four quarterbacks I'm going to talk, I'm expecting they'll probably only keep three. They'll probably either cut Barkley or they'll cut the next guy I'm going to talk about, Davis Webb. I'm not sure who exactly they'll cut. I'm going to go ahead and bet on Webb. And, but you never know. Anything could really happen in this sort of scenario. But Davis Webb, I think he, I think he was on the Jets before this. I'm pretty sure he was on the Jets before he was on the Bills, and he also has just been a career back, not bad, at the current position he's at, Davis Webb. Now if I dog would quit interrupting my YouTube video to quote things that I already know, that wasn't a lie, I knew it wasn't a lie, I'm in the NFL just as much as you are, but anyways. After that interruption, I'd say Davis Webb, out of the four QBs, he's probably the one that'll get cut in uh, preseason. Which one did they draft? Uh, Fromm. They drafted Jake, Jake Fromm. Fromm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I'd Fromm. say that they probably keep Allen, Barkley, and Fromm. And 
I think Barkley might move down to that number three because they want to get from some time in, but we'll see what ends up happening. And since that's basically the end of the quarterback, now I'm going to talk about running backs. And this depth chart I'm looking at, which is courtesy of ourlads.com, um, that's what it's their roster predictions that they update probably daily, I guess, with their signings. But they have running back Devin Singletary as the number one. And honestly, this man, I'm almost positive. Let's see here. Devin Singletary. I think he went to a California school. Almost positive he did. Like, one of those ones, like, not USC, but, like, he might have went to, uh... No, maybe he did go to USC. I don't think he went to UCLA. That was Joshua Kelly. He got drafted this year, but not by the Bills, but he got drafted. Oh, wait, I just realized I did not talk about Jake Fromm. Yeah, Jake Fromm. I need to talk about him first. Get that roster breakdown on him first. So, Fromm, I definitely liked coming out of George. I was really surprised that he fell to the fifth. I thought he was definitely deserving of something a bit more than that. Um, just based on what his career with Georgia, he, I'm pretty sure he's the one that had a bit of throwing deep issues. Or maybe he was the one that could throw deep, but he was something like the seventh quarterback taken. I feel like it was quite a drop. Considering that Jalen Hurts got taken in the second and he got taken in the fifth, I feel like that's kind of... Like, I feel like they're similar talents, although Hurts has more of the mobile QB. I feel like they're similar talent and that Fromm might be able to throw a bit more than Hurts can a bit better. But um, pretty much not much to say there. I don't think he'll get cut. Um, definitely at this point, fifth round quarterbacks, like, we've seen them go on to do much, but think that he's pretty much in a scenario where he's going to be set up to be a career backup and that's okay the NFL does need career backups it has to happen the NFL needs them but I just think that's probably a solid pick to get in the fifth round you can get a nice backup quarterback that should fit well in their system and hopefully head coach Sean McDermott I'm pretty sure he's still the head coach there I'm, oh, I'm almost positive he still is I'm not, I don't know why I'm questioning it. but Hopefully he can get some stuff done with him. Now, I can move on to running backs. And no, I don't think I'm going to be breaking down their entire roster. I'm just going to be breaking down some of the main points. Probably not even getting into some of the lower stuff. But I'll try to break down all their draft picks, even though I've already uh, graded their draft class. I'll try to break down some of their picks. Um, but... Obviously, Singletary is the first. He was a rookie last year, backing up Frank Gore, who moved on over to the Jets. But, honestly, I think he's got a lot in him. I think he was a 700-yard rusher last season, and that was as a uh, change of pace back to Frank Gore. So, definitely think he has got a lot of talent there. I think he possibly, like... I would not be surprised if he broke a thousand yards, but I think Allen's gonna try to work on his passing more this year. I think they're gonna be more of a pass first offense, and that's why Singletary will have to get good in that receiving game. And I think he is already pretty good there, so definitely should work out just fine. But not much to say about Singletary. In fact, I'm gonna take a small break from this just so I can make sure that he did go to a California school like I thought he did. Just a minute. It'll take just a second. No, he went to Florida Atlantic. Okay, I'm wrong. That's sad. He went to Florida Atlantic, but... Yeah, I guess he just went to Florida Atlantic. And I'll probably talk about their top four running backs. Not, like, top five or anything like that, but probably the four that they've got on their roster that I'm pretty sure all four will end up making the roster. But number two on their team, it is... TJ Yeldon, the former Jacksonville Jaguar, and this man, I think it's not bad. I think pretty much he's just been on the Jaguars and the uh, Jaguars and the Bills. Might have been us, but um, he definitely hasn't done a bad job, and he'll do fine as a backup. I don't really think there's much of an issue there with him. Also, not much to talk about that, but his secondary position on the depth chart could easily be taken over by running back Zach Moss, their third round pick. This dude, definitely one of the higher rated running backs coming in to this draft, to the draft. 
He was from Utah, uh, I believe State, whichever one has the red uniforms. I'm not a huge college football guy, I do watch enough of it to know, but pretty sure it's State, and yeah, and then Love is from the other, Jordan Love is from the other Utah, and then there's BYU. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are the big three. But Zach Moss is one of them. He was taken in the third round by the Buffalo Bills, and I honestly, I'm pretty sure I gave these guys a high grade in my grading, grading every, every, grading every NFL team's draft class. I'm pretty sure I gave them a high grade because of the fact that they managed to get quite a lot of solid players out of this draft, like guys like Jake Fromm in the fifth, Zach Moss in the third, stuff like that that just really will help out your team. And they also got AJ Epinesa, who I might not break down today, but I will eventually. Um, but definitely very solid pick there. Um, which is running back Taiwan Jones, who pretty much just been there. I did, I think, I'm pretty sh almost positive he's been in the league for like 11 years or something. No, nine. He was drafted in 2011 by the Oakland Raiders. He got cut, and now he's on the Bills. That's what it is. Uh, you see, I do do my research for my videos. He was drafted by them as like, I think he was a punt returner or a kick returner mainly as a main, I'm almost positive, and at the moment he's just kind of chilling on the Bills there. Not really doing much, not much to talk about with him, and I just am taking a slight break so that I can break down this roster without having to wreck myself. Okay. There. Okay. This hourlands.com breaks it down into right wide receiver and left wide receiver for some odd reason, so I guess I'll start off with right wide receiver. And the first one there is Stefan Diggs. Obviously, this quite possibly the Bills' biggest move this season was draft. <coughs> not drafting. <coughs> oh gosh, sorry, I have something in my throat. Not drafting Stefan Diggs. They traded him for like a first and a third, I think. Maybe a first, a second, two firsts, something like that. But definitely a good move. This man will definitely give Josh Allen something to aim for. Definitely. We'll do that, and my screen froze. Okay. But, pretty much, I like this man over in Minnesota. I feel like he got cut down a bit, just by the fact that they also had Adam Thielen on the same team. The Vikings were absolutely rigged last season. All the people they brought to the Pro Bowler, they had their quarterback, running back, fullback, and wide receiver, and tight end all go to the Pro Bowl. And safety. I'm pretty sure Harrison Smith made it, too. So, they had an absolutely insane roster last season, but they lost quite a few guys on defense, and they lost, like, Stefan Diggs on that offense. So, you know it's not going to be as explosive, but it'll still be explosive. Um, but Diggs, he kind of got overshadowed by Adam Thielen. I think he was the number two to Adam Thielen, but the Bills are going to love him. He's definitely going to really, really help them out. Then we have... Like, there's left, right, and there's SWR, and I'm pretty sure that means small. slot, slot. It's slot wide receiver, and I'm going to talk about him next. It's Cole Beasley, the former Dallas Cowboy. Uh, I think, yeah, wasn't he the one that had his nickname as, like, Sauce or something like that? But he's definitely solid wide receiver. He's kind of short, but he's definitely, he's got... He's got the stuff in him to be really good. I think he could definitely help out this offense last season. I don't think he was really productive. Not quite a thousand yard receiver, but he never really was. So he'll definitely be good as that slot man to help them out. And then we have in the left wide receiver position. It is John Brown, the former, oh gosh, the former Arizona Cardinal. And then, former Raven for like a year, and then he came over to the Bills. And I remember, and, and they left the same year, and Brown went to, John Brown went to the Ravens, and Jaron Brown went to the Hawks, and I'm pretty sure he's still there. If he's not, then you can let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure he's still there to this 
day. But Brown is definitely, he's a speed wide receiver, and he definitely shows it out on the field. He, like, he gets the job done when it needs done. He's very fast, and he catches the ball well. Again, none of these guys other than Diggs are a 1,000-yard wide receiver, but honestly, on your team, you only need one 1,000-yard receiver, and then you got a bunch of backups. So I think this is actually an extremely solid wide receiver core because their top three is stacked with Diggs, Beasley and Brown. Like, that's a really solid top three. And I definitely think you cannot disrespect that top three. Then you got guys like Isaiah McKenzie and Duke Williams, who are also both wide receivers. And that's pretty much going to be my breakdown of the wide receiver position. But I guess now I'll move on to tight end. And apparently, according to this, uh, their number one is Dawson Knox. Uh, not Dawson Knox. No, yeah, it is. He is ranked as their number one. And, uh... And this man is who I thought was the number one. is Tyler Crawford. So, that's their tight end position that I'm going to break down for you. Nothing really important other than those two. Lee Smith is on the team as well, though. Um, but, like, those two... They're not, like, necessarily, like, your big names. They're probably 500-yard tight ends apiece. Which does totally for a thousand yards. Allen could be a four thousand yard quarterback this season. I'm not gonna doubt it, but uh, definitely solid enough. I'm almost positive Knox played as a fullback, or maybe I'm just thinking that from Madden. I'm a Madden player and an NFL fan, so sometimes I get them mixed up because I know I used Knox as a fullback in Madden. But uh, oh gosh, okay, that's not working. But like. Again, there's not they're not the top notch and I'm sorry that my screen is glitching out so bad. I don't know why I have good internet today. I don't know why it's glitching out so bad and making me die, but it's alright. That's pretty much I I don't quite want to get into the defense today because I don't want to make this video super super long. So I'm probably just gonna call it and cut it short right here. Um notable guys on their line are Dion Dawkins. Quentin Spain, Mitch Morse, and Cody Ford. Not to mention John Fleshino, also, I believe. And at fullback, they have Patrick DeMarco. So it's pretty much going to be breaking down the Bills' offense. I'll probably be making videos like this more often where I'm ju it's just me playing some sort of game and either breaking down a roster or just talking plain old NFL or talking any sort of topic. But I'm going to try to make more videos like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.